Rishi ji, I, I want to begin by asking you, if I may, uh, about your dharmic journey. Uh, can you tell us what is it about dharma that made you embrace it? I think the first answer I'll give you to that is the direct one. It's from chapter 7, verse 19 of the Bhagavad Gita. Bahunam janmanamante, jnanavan mam prapadyate, vasudeva sarvamiti, samahatma sudurlabha. After many, many births in pursuit of jnana, in pursuit of a higher understanding, one finally comes to the conclusion, Vasudeva Sarvamiti. So when I was born in Detroit, Michigan, in a white Caucasian middle-class family, nothing particularly bad about them or great about them. They weren't philosophers, they weren't thoughtful, they weren't uh, the kind of stimulating environment where you would get exposed to other cultures, you might say but lovely people, friendly enough. And so I didn't have a traumatic upbringing. I had a good, healthy upbringing. Military family, third generation. I should have been the next, but didn't want to go to Vietnam and kill innocent women and children. So I could see right away at a quite young age, something was wrong with the world. I also could see that I wasn't getting straight answers from my elders, from my teachers, from my parents. And alarms were going off. So gradually I became more and more philosophical. It was the 60s. And so the gurus of India were beginning to now go back out into the world. My joke about it is uh, first, England and the outside powers came in and colonized and took everything, robbed the whole place, took their jewels, took everything. But then after they left or after they were finished, the gurus of India said, wait a minute, you forgot the most important thing. You forgot the crown jewels. You didn't take the Vedic knowledge. So the gurus started coming west. And I was just at the right age in my 20s for them to come to the west. I began to hear them and to pay attention to them. And finally, it led me on inevitable quest. And I joined an ashram in which I stayed for five years as a brahmachari. And it was the, the, my conclusion, or you might say that the Vedic conclusion became mine with a reawakening of my previous life, no doubt. So now there I was looking like Nick Nolte, but having a Hindu inside, I can only tell you, mm -hmm. inside there is a real Hindu man or person or Atma. So that coincidence that strange reversal is now, of course, you can see hundreds of millions of yogis around the world, not from the racial cultural mix of Bharat, but in fact, from every culture around the world. So we know something's happening. We know that yogis from Bharat are being sent out around the world in skin that doesn't fit their culture. But we also know that the same people who were uh, colonized have also gone out into the world because they had permission to go move into the countries of their colonizers, strangely enough. So they've recolonized, you know the saying that for 300 years, Britain colonized India and in 50 years, uh, in India took it over with uh, Indian food. The only good meal you could get in England about 20 years ago was Indian food and Italian. So, as I continued in this process, I learned the cooking. I, while in the ashram, I learned all those different things, but more than anything, I did tapasya, real tapasya, and I burned off my ancestral karmas. And so from that time forward, that was 1969, I've been a dedicated Hindu for my entire life without blinking, looking back. I do mantras every day. I've done sadhana every day. I continued as if I was born in the culture and was one of its dedicated uh, uh, carriers and practitioners. So I have lived the Vedic Hindu Dharma every day of my life since I was 23 years old and I'm now 74. I decided there was nothing left I wanted to do but teach it. So at age 50, I quit doing all other activities. I had no money. I had just enough money to pay one month's rent, but I dedicated myself completely to teaching the Vedic knowledge. I said, well, Bhagavan, it's up to you. If you want this to happen, it'll happen. 
And my partner, Sandy Graham, whom you've been speaking with, joined me in that at that time. And so both of us are yoga practitioners and in the deepest sense, philosophically and lifestyle. Diet, no drugs, no alcohol, no nothing that no good Brahmin would touch. So none of those things. So the lifestyle goes with the philosophy. It's acharya. Yad yada acharya tishveshtas. Tat tad evi taro janaha. Sayad pramanam kurute. Lukas tad anuvartite. Does means nothing unless you walk the talk. So there you go. I'm a dedicated Hindu inside of an unsuspecting Nick Nolte body. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Prishi ji. Uh, that was very, very inspiring. Um, thank you for sharing that with us. Namaste. We hope you enjoyed this Chitti Media content. Please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content and to support our work, please visit citti.net. Dhanyavad. Namaskar. <laughs>